So in this video, let's take a look at some hydrides. And a very common one is sodium borohydride. And another one is lithium aluminum hydride. And what these reagents do is when you treat them with, let's say, a acid chloride, <coughs> you treat it with either one of these reagents, okay, what you're going to get is a alcohol. We'll get a primary alcohol. Let's see, we got one carbon there. And so we would have one, two, three, four, just like that, okay? So that's really what the overall uh, reaction's doing, is it can take a acid chloride and convert it to an alcohol. And as we progress in this video, we're going to take a look at other carboxylic acid derivatives and see how these reagents interact with those. But I want to start off or start talking about this idea here that for, for simplicity's sake, we have sodium borohydride right there, but we call it a hydride because we can take that molecule and kind of look at it like this. So there's the anion species of the sodium borohydride, and we could say, hey, that's equivalent to a hydride like that. So when we do mechanisms, I'm, sometimes I'm going to use that just to keep things very, very simple. But then there's going to be other times where I'm not going to use that, and I'm going to have to use the metal, let's say, for example, in lithium aluminum hydride, or not the lithium, sorry, I'm going to use the aluminum in lithium aluminum hydride to help us figure out the mechanisms. So let's look at a mechanism with our acid chloride, with our sodium borohydride, and just take a look at the mechanism and see how that uh, works out, okay? So we need a, other bits of information, though, on how we're going to do this here. So with sodium borohydride, okay, let's put it here, sodium borohydride, and we could do that in some methanol, like that. Now, the step here, how is this going to work? So let's redraw our acid chloride here. Now this species right there, we're going to just say, hey, it's going to look like this. Just a hydride, okay? And so what's going to happen now is we can see that's electron rich, that carbon is electron poor, so we are simply going to do a nucleophilic addition step right here. So we will go nucleophilic addition step. And that's going to generate this species right here. O minus. And we just added that hydrogen right there. Okay. Now when we do a reduction here, we have to add it in excess because you have to add, at the end of the day, two hydrogens to that carbonyl carbon. So you need at least two to three equivalents of the sodium borohydride, okay? Now we get this species right here. Now what's interesting is, do you think these lone pairs can come down and kick off the hydrogen? No. Hydrogen is a horrible leaving group. But the chloride is a good leaving group, so it's the chloride that's going to leave right there. So now we have another step where we have the nucleophile elimination. There's our nucleophile elimination. <coughs> and what kind of product did we get right there? That is a aldehyde. But we have excess reducing agent present, and that uh, aldehyde's not just going to stay there. It's going to be reduced again. So we're going to have another 
nucleophilic addition step. So we'll just write that there, our nucleophilic addition step. And we're just going to be using another equivalent of the sodium borohydride, and I'm just going to represent it as the hydride. And that's going to come in, boom, boom. And we'll get this guy here. Like so. Nope, 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 nope. That is, there's no hydrogen there. So there's only two lone pairs there. Now there's three, so that has to be negatively charged. All right. Just like that. <coughs> okay. And now the last step right here is we have to now get a proton onto that oxygen. Now, do we use another hydride and say, hey, that's going to come in and attack the oxygen? No. That's negatively charged. That's negatively charged. There's going to be a clash right there, electronic clash, right? So that we're not going to use another hydride. But what other proton source do we have? We have our methanol right there. So we're just going to use our our proton or methanol here, so we can represent it like this if we'd like. Just expand out that. Well, that, that looks a little weird, doesn't it? But that doesn't matter. Grab that proton, go like that. And then we would generate our alcohol. And in this particular case, we made a primary alcohol. And that didn't show up. So primary alcohol. So if we did this same mechanism, or if we did this same transformation, but with lithium aluminum hydride, we would get the same exact product. And it would be the exact same mechanism for this particular reaction. We would just say, hey, lithium aluminum hydride, that's as equivalent to a hydride. So both of these reactions would uh, give you the same product. But the, the difference though with lithium aluminum hydride is that this reagent cannot be placed in a polar protic solvent. So let's draw it out and so, and so you can see the difference here. Uh, So if we take the same starting material, but now we're going to use a different reducing agent. You see the difference here? The product is the same. But we had to do it in two steps. And in that second step there, we just need a acidic workup. Okay. So you see here, the solvent that we used in step one is a polar aprotic solvent, THF. And it has to be done in a stepwise manner. With sodium borohydride, you can use it in solvents like polar protic solvents. Okay?